Hello, everyone. Um, today, I have a great interview. Um, this is with Stina Schmidt, and Stina Schmidt is an ACT expert and tutor. So if you have ever wondered how to get a good score on the ACT or just wanted to know more about it, then this interview is perfect for you because Stina is going to tell us all how to get an excellent score on the ACT. Um, I've known Stina now for a little over a year. I tutor academic writing and I've been in the same networking group as Stina and because she helps students get into college and I help students with writing for college. We've connected a lot and I've just always appreciated that Stina brings to her tutoring style something very different than what you would expect from an ACT tutor. Stina doesn't have this one size fits all approach to teaching her students. And I think what she's going to share with us today is going to be extremely valuable. Um, Stina has a background that's fascinating. She started off doing special education and I think she still does special education, don't you Stina? Yes, I still do some uh, special education with my homeschool group, yes. Yes, and um, Stina, also has a master's in organizational leadership in human resources. So she has a business background too. And she's been tutoring the ACT for five years now. Um, she's done both in-person tutoring and then also now she's mostly doing online tutoring. So welcome, Stina. We're thrilled to see you. Well, hi. Thank you, Suzanne. I really appreciate being interviewed today. Um, I really enjoy and am passionate about the ACT and really think that students nowadays need to know how to study for the ACT and how important it is not just to get into college, but to use the skills tested on the ACT to help them move forward in life. Uh, you need to know how to do writing papers or making resumes or how to utilize the math skills in the real world. And we don't do that anymore. Instead, we we take a test and we just dump the information. And that's why I'm here to oh. tell this, the secret. Yes. That's great because I, I appreciate that point too because a lot of times we think with studying for the ACT, it's just about studying that test. And, and you really see the wider picture with everything. Um, and that's, that's what's wonderful. So why don't you just give us a little information about uh, what drew you to education and then why specifically you tutor the ACT now? Okay. Um, well, I have wanted to be a teacher since I was in kindergarten. I remember when uh, we had our kindergarten graduation and I was the teacher in our kindergarten skit. Uh, so I've always wanted to teach. I've had very inspiring teachers all the way through. And I did really well with reading English and science. But the math portion, I did not do so well. Um, I didn't feel that it was important. I didn't feel that it was going to carry me anywhere. And I didn't feel that I needed to use it in life either. And you're probably wondering how am I capable to be uh, an ACT tutor. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. But then I became a teacher and I realized that kids are not using the skills in their everyday life like they're supposed to. Parents aren't either. They're at a loss as to where to teach their child or how to teach their child in order to use the skills they need to be successful. Um, even a trip to the grocery store can be a very uh, mathematical or a learning experience in general, you know, and so I love teaching and I love teaching parents how to teach their children better. Well, I took a, I, I, I started teaching in South Dakota where I was born and then I moved to Minnesota and started teaching there. When I came to Iowa to marry my husband, I also teach. But the more states I was in, the more I realized that students all over the world are struggling with learning. And so, while I was in Minnesota, part of my two learning center. I like Sylvan Learning Center because of the fact of their format. However, I did not like uh, the fact that it had to be a part-time job. I felt that you could help students uh, year round, um, 40 hours a week and still get paid a decent wage. And so I decided when I moved to Iowa that I was going to start tutoring in person. 
And in college, I was told, you're an educator, make yourself marketable. So I did the whole gamut. I did K-8 reading and math, and then I did the ACT test prep to cover the full gamut. But I realized that if you have a child with disabilities or a learning issue, you feel a little more proud about it, and it's a little harder to get a tutor. That and the field is flooded with elementary and middle school tutors. It's not flooded with ACT tutors because that's not something that people think that they can study. They just think that they can go ahead and take the test and be done. And so the more students I got with ACT test prep and the more the parents were willing to hire a tutor for ACT test prep, the more I thought I was marketable in that area. And I also thought since I took classes in high school for ACT test prep, they should be able to take them as well, but the schools don't offer it as often as they used to. Right. I think that's a great point about the ACT, about people not, not thinking about studying for it. So I think this, um, this next question really will tie into that. And I'm wondering what the mistakes are that people make with the ACT or any myths there are about taking the ACT? Well, one of the biggest myths about the ACT is that you, um, it's just like any of the other tests that you've ever taken, which it is not. The ACT was actually created by a college or by colleges. They wanted it to study students' ability to problem solve. And so they gave the children or the students a test that's had skills that they should have already learned, but it seemed a little more difficult. It was written a little higher level, more college level, and they wanted to see if students were actually going to look at the question and look at the, the material and see if they were going to freeze. If they were going to freeze, then college was not right for them. My personal opinion is that college can be for anyone and whether you can go to college because that's what you want to do or if you go to cosmetology school, you still need to take the ACT. The another mistake is you can't study for it. They feel that you should just go ahead and fly through it and just be done with it. Get Then maybe after you fly through it, maybe you take another test. And my thought is, you're paying for this test. Why are you going to waste your money, waste your time just going ahead and not studying for it when you could study for it and get it done the first time or get it right the first time or study for it and maybe think, okay, I studied this way. I like it. I did improve my score, but now I can study it again and get better. Uh, so that's another mistake that people make. Another mistake is I can't take the ACT because I'm not smart enough. It's not about smarts. You can learn skills. It's about whether or not you can figure out the strategies and take the test well. If you don't think so, you're right. You're not going to. But if you think, okay, I don't know it yet, and I can study for this and learn how to do it, then yes, anybody can do well on the ACT. The score of the ACT, a perfect score, is 36. An average score is 20. That is answering 50% of the questions correctly. How many high schoolers can take a test, get 50% right, and be average? Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Yes, and That's that is mind blowing. Isn't it? It is, yeah. it's, it's absolutely mind blowing. And they don't think about that because they're like, okay, in high school, if I take a test and I get 50%, I fail. I'm less than failing because 60% is failing. But on the ACT, you answer 50% of the questions correctly and you get an average score. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. I wish I'd taken that instead of the SAT. <laughs> right? Yeah. And and you can guess on the ACT, whereas most people think, well, I'm not going to get it right anyway, so I'm not even going to try to guess. In fact, I had one person do the ACT for a baseline test. In the beginning, he took 90 minutes to take the test. The test is a three-hour test. He took 90 minutes and says, I'm done. I'm not going to answer it. He only answered uh, a third of the questions the first time. Oh my goodness. And then when he actually took the actual real test, he got a $10,000 scholarship to college. 
Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. Stina, that's that's incredible. Yes. You've yes. just changed that one student's life dramatically. Right, absolutely. Oh my goodness. Oh, that must feel so wonderful. It does. It makes me feel like, yes, students can accomplish things even though they may start out kind of low. And what I, what I do is I make sure that the students feel comfortable with me as they're studying it. So if they're making mistakes, they're not kicking themselves um, all the time. I'm saying it's a safe environment to make mistakes in so that you don't make those mistakes on the real test. And they feel confident coming out of the test and saying, yes, I did a good job instead of, whoa what was that oh my goodness yes yeah i think that's so important to remind people that they can make the mistakes and be comfortable with you and then you know feel confident in being able to do that so that when they go into the test they're they're feeling so much more confident having figured things out with you yes yeah. yes absolutely Oh, great. So what should parents know about the ACT? The parents should know that it's something that can be utilized in all areas of life. So if you're studying for the ACT or if you're in high school or even if you're in middle school, as a parent, you need to figure out ways to make those skills available to them in life. For example, I'm writing a blog about how you can take the ACT or study for the ACT while on vacation. And most people would think, oh, that's so boring. But if you think about it, if you're figuring out the mileage and how much per gallon or how much you're saving money by um, getting the most cost effective vehicle, that is studying for the ACT. If you're figuring out sales and percentages, that's f figuring out skills for the ACT. If you are researching for the ACT and you are going ahead and doing um, like, reading websites and comparing and contrasting websites for val validity and reliability, you're studying for the ACT, you're reading critically, and that's what's important. Most parents don't think about those things. They think, oh, I have to get a study guide that is this thick, and it has to be what, it, what we're supposed to be studying for, and it has to be long, and it has to be boring. No, it doesn't. You can study for the ACT and do real life skills at the same time. That's that's fascinating. That's that's a completely different way of looking at it than than I think not just parents <laughs> that I think most of the population feels about studying for the ACT. Oh, that's incredible. Yes. Yeah. So so what advice would you give the students preparing for this? What tips? Most of the advice that I give out to parents or to students even, the first thing that they ask me is this. I have test anxiety. Can studying for the ACT help me? And my question is this. Are you applying the skills to things that you like? Are you applying to the things to the prose fiction that you read? So the fiction books that you read, are you applying reading skills to that? Are you making movies in your head as you're reading the story? Are you uh, using the writing, the English uh, skills in the ACT, and you're actually applying them to your writing, applying them to your classes? If you're doing that and you're taking those ACT skills and mastering them so you can do well anywhere you go, then you don't have to worry about test anxiety because you're doing everything you're supposed to do in order to study for the ACT. Yes, a study guide helps and keeps you on track, mm -hmm. but take the study guide, take the strategies in the study guide and apply it to everything else. For example, right now I have a student who loves Marvel comics. He's absolutely obsessed with it. Is that a bad thing? No, it's a great thing. He can take the ACT skills and strategies and apply it to them. For example, the when you're talking about the, the Marvel comics and you're wondering, okay, how do I apply science to it? Well, if you think about how all the superheroes got their powers, you can think about the scientific principles behind that. Mm 
and really hone in on, hey, this is very interesting. How did they get their powers and study the how they got them and study the principles behind it to see if they're sound? You know, wow. and, <laughs> right? You that blows think my mind. And you would wind up enjoying the comics so much better. Exactly, exactly, because you'd understand it a little bit better. And with Marvel, uh, they also do a lot of history as well, because they're comparing what it would be like, um, like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they have a, a criminal mastermind called Hydra that's totally based on what would have happened had we lost World War II and the Germans won. Right. And they're thinking behind it. So if you study the history of it, you're like, oh, my gosh, this is 1984 all over again. But it's not as boring as 1984 if you think 1984 is boring. If you put it in a comic book, hello, it's a lot more fun. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Oh, my gosh. That's great. So how does... The does your student respond really well to, to doing that? Are you doing it long term with the student? Yes, we are doing it long term. Um, and uh, we are applying the English principles to his writing. We're applying the scientific principles to the scientific science behind it. We're and he's excited about it. His parents are saying that he's excited about going to school again. He likes learning. He's super engaged. And uh, just he's thinking about things that he wasn't thinking about before. And that's the best part of it. Yes, that's one of those results in addition to doing well in the test. That's it's not very tangible, but it's just such an enriching aspect of a person's life. Yes, absolutely. And I do that all the time. I tell students, if it's during the school year, I tell students, okay, what classes are you taking right now and how can you apply these skills to your classes? Um, I had another student who was taking a research writing skills and she said, I've never learned any of these English skills. I says, yes, you've learned them but you might not have mastered them or looked at them at the same way. Try applying them to your English writing skills, your research paper skills or whatever class, and you'll be able to do really well. Once she started applying it, it was like, oh, I get this now. It really makes sense. And that was the one that went into the ACT the first time and was totally flabbergasted, had the test anxiety, really didn't know what to do did horrible on the ACT. The, she went through my class. She took the test again. She came out going, huh, that was really good. I feel confident. Oh, that's wonderful. And that's what I love hearing. I love hearing that students are confident and they're ready and willing to share with other people. I had another person that we we went over Algebra 1 first because that's the, what she needed help with at the beginning. And then we did ACT test prep. She was going to enter Algebra 1 class teaching her peers how to do Algebra better than the teacher was doing. Oh, my goodness. And I have story after story after story just like that. Oh, that's great because it's a way of measuring your success. I mean, not just with the scores, which I'm sure are impressive. Have you raised a lot of the scores too? Yes, yes. Um, I raise, I can probably raise a score five to six points each time. Five to six points each time. And yes. about how long do you work with a student? I can work anywhere from a month to about three months with a student. Um, and it also depends on what they do in addition to our classes. So if they just stick to our classes, it's probably going to raise two to three points. If it's um, if they will do more work outside of class, it can raise even higher than that. Uh, but on average, it's about four to six points that I raise at a time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's that's really impressive. Wow. So thank you. <laughs> so um, how would people go about like working with you? What would be a, a first step that they could take? 
Well, uh, they can go ahead and check my website at saintstrainingandtutoring.weebly.com. And then they can sign up for a free consultation with me. And we can just talk about what their goals are for the ACT, what the, their child's interests are, what uh, they, if they've already taken the ACT, what they want to increase their scores. And then we come up with some goals of what we can do next. And then we go through and we have them take a, or I have them take an ACT practice test. And that's, there's no pressure on that test. It's just a test to see what they still need to learn and that then I create the curriculum that's going to be used for them. Um, and then we go through, we go through the test afterwards, talk about how they did, and then we sign up for classes and that's about it. And oh we just goodness. go through it. That's the process. And so as you were doing it, like in that consultation and you're talking about what their interests are, so then your curriculum, is it combined on how they do on that assessment? And then you're also in, incorporating into that their, in, their specific interests when you design that? Absolutely, absolutely. I use three different uh, curriculums and I combine it into one based on what their needs are and what their interests are. If they're more of a studying type of person where they're always constantly reading or those kind of things, then I may use the Kaplan University Study Guide because I really like their format and I like it that it's from a college. And But if they're more sports oriented or they're more interested in other things and need something that interests them, then I might use something that I got off of Teacher Pay Teachers, which also has um, ACT level passages, but uses high school interests and makes the learning a lot more fun. Right. Oh so. my. Yeah, so you're really taking into account not just the interest, but also then the learning styles. Absolutely. I've had way too many students in the beginning get really bored and frustrated because they weren't interested in the material. And my point is, is that you've got to create good habits first before you can go into a test where you're already nervous and already frustrated about whatever's going on in a high schooler's life. And there's a lot. So when you actually are applying the skills and creating those habits to your interests, then you're able to actually really focus on what's important on the test. And you're going to say, okay, I don't really understand what they're talking about here, but I don't have to. All I have to do is answer the question correctly. All of the correct answers are on the test. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes. And it's a, if you look at it this way, that it's an open book test, all the answers are there. You just have to pick the right one it makes test anxiety go away a lot faster. And if you know that you don't have to understand the material to answer the correct answer, that even helps even more. Okay. So what resources would you suggest to people as things they could use to prepare elsewhere? Okay. You know, outside of a session. Absolutely. Um, so, what I do is I usually give them some homework. So for example, if I, let's say we were studying about reading, I would give them the keywords that are on the reading questions. And then I would say, go find a book that interests you and read the book. Then as you are reading the book, create your own test questions based on that book and see if you can come up with some interesting answers that would correlate with that book and help you understand the book a little bit better. For vocabulary questions in reading, I would suggest that they read the book and any words that they don't really are, vocab words that aren't really interesting them to them or they don't understand the meaning of them, that becomes their new vocab word. See if they can find out the definition in the words around it or find synonyms that are just as difficult in the dictionary or thesaurus that they can use as well. And then use that in conversations. Because that's yeah. what the ACT does. So. And that's the best way really to acquire your, your vocabulary. Exactly. Because if you go and use a, a, 
a standard vocabulary curriculum, you're only doing the words that they pick out. But you may have a background that is totally different than what the book is telling you to be, and it's not going to apply to you. So you need to increase your vocabulary your way. And vocabulary then is not going to be a strenuous, tedious thing. It's going to be fun and interesting. Right. So. And for, for the other skills that they're studying for, for the ACT, what might be things that you send them to? Other resources might be um, for math. What can you do in math for the real world? For example, if you're planning a vacation, maybe you want to figure out the area of a circle. And if your hotel is in the middle, the area of the circle might be the walking distance of your hotel and see if there's any touristy attractions in that area. You're applying it to real life. Most people, once they learn the area of a circle and they've taken a test and spit it back out, they're like, I don't really need to know about the area of a circle anymore. This is actually having applications that can apply to it. Um, I already mentioned about sales prices and stuff like that. That deals with percentages. Fractions deal with cooking. Uh, money is decimals. Um, if And if you're having positive and negative numbers, that also could be uh, budgeting or money. Because if you have a negative number in your bank account, does the bank really like you? <laughs> no. No. And it teaches them about budgeting. It teaches them about the importance of using those negative numbers. And I also went to a conference that said, you need to have algebra no matter what. And I, I was one that was very against algebra, thought it was the dumbest thing I've ever taken. And he said, okay, so what if you're putting an entertainment center down in your basement and you have to make sure that it's actually going to fit once you because you're coming down the stairs and once it stands up, it's got to fit. That's using algebra. Yes. And if it doesn't fit, you did all of that work and it's probably heavy and cumbersome. You did all that work and now you have to try to get it back up the stairs without taking it apart. Uh, <laughs> that would have been so handy to think that way in school. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I love how you're just illustrating all these real world applications. Mm -hmm. And if you think about the scientific, uh, the science part of it, they have diagrams on the ACT. Those diagrams have numbers and equations and all things that you're like, I don't understand this because it doesn't make sense to you. Now, how many times have you tried to set up your DVD player or your computer or something where you had to read the diagram and it didn't make sense to you. Oh, yes. <laughs> I think that happens most of the time. <laughs> right? But if you use that diagram now as an ACT study guide and look at what you actually need to see, look at and figure out how it pieces together, you're going to be studying for the ACT and you're going to be applying a life skill later on as well. It's going to make so much more sense. It's going to be a lot more interesting and it's going to be a lot more fun. Not to mention, it's not going to be scary to set up your DVD player the next time you have to set it up. I know, or have to call my brother to do it. Exactly. Oh, oh you have so many people who are just loving what you're doing. Uh, Ashley says how she loves the real world applications that you have. Victoria really likes how you make it a safe space to make mistakes in your tutoring sessions. Oh, wow. Yeah. And Ashley again says, you know, customizing instruction for each student. This has really been important and you've opened <laughs> my mind up to how you study for any standardized test, not just the ACT. Yes. Well, and if you think about it, even after we take the ACT and get into college or do whatever we want to do after high school, if we're going to be certified in anything, we're going to have to take a written test. Even teachers have to take a written test to be certified now. Yes. Um, if you're going to be a lawyer, you have to be certified. If you're going to um, be a tool and die cut person, you've got to take a written test it's always going to happen in your certifications that you're going to have to take some form of 
written test in order to quantify whether or not you're going to be able to do the job. It's not just the ACT. And so we have to prepare ourselves for taking those tests all the time. Why not find real world applications in order to do that? Wow. <laughs> I think you just changed my whole perspective on standardized <laughs> tests. This has just been fascinating. Um, does anybody here have questions for Stina on, on her tutoring or on the ACT? Well, the comments I think are a little bit behind okay. from, from Facebook. But if you do have questions for Stina, um, I'll be checking back and I, I'll just tag her so that she can check all of your questions and respond to them. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you've changed my, my whole thought process on, on how people tutor standardized tests because so many times I'll learn about a standardized test prep program and it really is that study guide and then just following that study guide and, and taking the practice exams all the time. I don't see that much with that whole aspect of real world applications. Well, it's another way of being able to look at it and it's another way to make it real. I was one of those students that said, what's the background behind why we're studying what we're studying? What am I going to do in real life? And what I got from my math teacher was, well, you'll never have a calculator in your pocket anymore. What is our phones? Calculators. So yeah. that was one something that I was like, eh, I don't really believe this. If I want to, I can carry a calculator with me. But what am I going to use it for? That's what I needed. And that's what a lot of kids need now. They want that instant gratification that they can use this after high school and not just because I want to get into college because not everybody is college bound but everybody has to be a competent adult and live in the real world using real world applications and that's how the ACT fits everybody not just college bound students. Oh my goodness. I am so glad I interviewed you today. It, no, it's just, I've learned so much. I have just this whole new appreciation for standardized tests that unfortunately I didn't have that before. Well, standardized tests have a stigma behind them because they're in the schools, they're supposed to be used for teachers so that they can prepare their students later on. So what a teacher does is they they teach, they teach, they teach, then the students take the ACE, the standardized testing and then the stu the teachers then look at those test scores and go, "Okay, so I missed areas this and this and this. I need to go back and reteach or I need to prepare them in a different way that's going to help them." And that's how they got the stigma. Um, instead of being used for those reasons, they got the stigma because they were used for funding. And that's how AC, the all standardized tests are like, oh, it's one day, one test, it's not going to matter. And now it can matter if you utilize it in the right way. And that's what I want to be known for, is to utilize it for real life applications, not just for getting into college or funding for something that I don't need funding for. Yeah, that's just so inspirational. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you could repeat the link to your website because I know you have a lot of great blog posts up there and if people want to get in touch with you about the consultation. Uh, sure, it's, would, you, would okay. you like me to put it in the chat? Um, I will type it right here. Okay, Saints Training and Tutoring. Thanks. Okay. Dot Weebly dot com. And you don't have to worry about a secure link because it automatically has a secure link with it. So once you put in the Saints Training and Tutoring dot Weebly dot com, it will automatically put the uh oh you have a comma in there instead of a Oh, okay. Well then I will let you <laughs> type it in. 
Yep, sure. Oh. I put my reading glasses down, everybody. So <laughs> That's okay. I, I thought I was doing just fine without them, but I guess I'm getting just a little too old. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not old. Not, a, not at all. <laughs> my eyes are. <laughs> <laughs> so I just put them into the chat there. Oh, great. And it does come up as a secure link, even though it doesn't have the www in front of it, but even www will get you to the right spot. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Stina. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm really appreciative of this. And I want everybody to know, everybody to know what the ACT really is and what it's for and why every high schooler should take the ACT if they are going to be a competent adult in real life. Right. All right. Well, thank you. And I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Bye.